and welcome to Trail Trials, the video review section of irunfar.com. My name is Travis Lyles and today we're going to take a look at the Sabino Trail by Montrail. Initial stats, 12.8 ounces in a men's size 9. We have a 19 millimeter heel, 9 millimeter midsole. Same geometry of course for the women's and that shoe in a size 7 comes in 10.25 ounces. So let's take a look at this shoe and what it's all about. So let's start off on the traction. Um, the tread itself is very similar to what you've seen before in Hard Rock. You'll probably hear me refer to Hard Rock a couple of times during this and that's because this is of that heritage. So it shares a lot of those features. We have these square lugs that make up various shapes around the outsole. So it's sort of an irregular pattern providing you know, lots of traction, lots of grip on different types of surfaces. So it's not uniform, and you'll see that throughout the whole outsole of the shoe is that you have different types of tread. So on the outside of the shoe, you have these squares, and on the, on the inside of the shoe, you have these kind of vertical and horizontal running lugs. So not bi-directional, but tri-directional lugs. Directly down the center, you have lugs that are rear-facing so that when you're going uphill, they're going to grip. Down in the bottom of the heel, you have a reverse lug that's going to grip when you're going downhill. But then on the sides of the shoe, you actually have lugs that are going to face to the right and to the left. And what those do is really add some extra traction when you're pushing off, maybe going around a switchback, have to do some sort of maneuvering. These actually provide grip when you're moving left or right. Most of the time you just see a forward or a reverse facing lug. Montreal went ahead and went with some lugs facing both the right and left sides to add some traction when you're moving uh, from side to side. In the middle of the shoe, we have a, a bit of a cutout here, which is what was existent on, on the previous Hard Rock. So the Sabino trail, trail still shares that. This is great for kind of muddy conditions or, or somewhere that you know, you've got some loose ground. That ground sort of gets you know, compacted up in here and actually provides some grip for you to keep moving. So some nice traction, but it does tend to hold a little bit of mud if that happens to be what you're running in. At the very back of the heel, we have another big line that runs across here, once again, for traction downhill. When we look at the midsole, it's listed as having a dual density midsole. I would go almost as far to say it's a triple density. Reason being is we've got this EVA foam that extends most of the shoe, so that's this kind of whitish gray color that you'll see. And that's not too soft, not too hard, cushioning, relatively good amount of it. That's going to extend all the way back into the heel where we get a softer type of foam or a crash pad. So if you're bombing downhill, you get some nice rebound as well as some nice shock absorption here. And then when we move into the medial part of the shoe, you'll actually see that this shoe is posted. So if you're an overpronator, that's going to help, help with your gait. Uh, if you're somebody that maybe is a, a more neutral runner, but towards the end of a race, it sort of starts to fall down, this is going to help you add some, some protection and, and try to keep that gait uh, a lot closer to being mechanically sound. So what you'll notice from that is that, that you have you know, nice lugs, lots of different direction, relatively thick foam here in the middle. That combined with a full length trail shield, so you have a rock plate that extends the entire length of the shoe. You have a lot of protection and support in this outsole, which isn't something that you see a lot of from manufacturers anymore. So this is a, a, a good way of, of being able to have support, traction, especially in those long hauls, which this, if you look at the marketing, Montreal's really targeting this at the ultra distance or even kind of a fast, lightweight hiker. As we move up into the out or into the upper, this is where a lot of weight saving comes in. So when we compare this to previous versions of the hard rock, specifically the classic hard rock, it weighed in at about 15 ounces. This I noted in a men's size 9 is about 12.8, so you can see some weight savings there. Last year's version, or the 09 Hard Rock, was at about 11 ounces. So this is getting closer to what that kind of original Hard Rock is, but you can see they've really put some effort in to stripping down this upper, making it more lightweight. So what you'll see here is some open cell mesh, not as tight as, as what you've maybe seen before. This does allow your foot to breathe. I've been out running in this several times in over 100 degree heat and about 80% humidity and I felt like my feet 
were able to breathe pretty well inside of this shoe, so I didn't feel like they were in an oven. You'll notice these sort of darker gray stripes throughout the shoe. Basically, this is like a, a faux suede, and what that does is, is essentially create the cage, I guess, for the shoe, allowing you know where the anchor points here for the laces attach, so that when you cinch those up, it sort of pulls on these straps and gives a nice secure fit to your foot. When we look at the toe bumper, basically what you can see is this shoe is, is wide fitting, so it's sort of a wider type of shoe. So while the toe box itself is not very tall, it does allow your foot to spread out. From a protection standpoint, the apex of this shoe is very sturdy. So they've extended the foam as well as the outsole up. So at that very farthest point of the shoe, you have a good impact point. When you move out to the side, that impact point becomes a lot um, less dense. So you can see the material here sort of collapses. Puncture resistant, though I would not say it's a, it's a bomb proof toe box, but it, you do have some pretty good material there. And really if you're looking at it, it's essentially three layers where you have the mesh, you have this suede, and then you have this actual kind of faux leather or, or rubber bumper that extends most of the way around the shoe. When we move to the heel, what you'll notice is you have a structured heel cup, so you can hear that in there. There is a piece of, of plastic basically keeping your foot, uh, keeping the shape of this shoe for stability purposes and, and just to maintain that, that heel. You have relatively good cushioning through here. Not super cushioned and padded, but probably middle of the road, but it is fully cushioned all the way around. A narrow fitting heel. I have a narrow heel and a wide forefoot, and I felt like this contoured to that pretty well, but I do think that there's plenty of room in there, so if you do have a wider heel, this could adjust to that. We have a gusseted tongue, meaning that we have a piece of fabric, basically, that attaches to the tongue on both sides of the shoe, keeping dirt and debris from getting in there, possibly irritating your foot. And then lastly, we have a removable insole. So if you're someone that has orthotics, you can pop this out, put your orthotics in there. But this does provide some level of arch support, so you can see hopefully by that, that you do have an arch to this, along with the medial posting and the actual upper of the shoe, providing a relatively good amount of arch support. So this is the Montreal Sabino Trail, a highly supportive, highly protective, long distance trail running shoe. Not a lot of those on the market right now, so if that's the type of shoe that you're looking for, in a relatively lightweight package at 12.8 ounces for this type of shoe, uh, definitely worth checking out. You can see them on Montreal.com. Please leave your comments and questions below in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.